Casey Gray here from The Conscious Builder, and what you're about to watch is a short segment of an interview I did with Bob Deeks, who is the president of RDC Fine Homes, a net zero and high performance home builder out in Whistler, BC. In this conversation, we get into a few topics, but most importantly, we get into the BC step code, as well as the path towards net zero building and why you need to stop building with fossil fuels, why we need to stop building with fossil fuels. So I won't hold you up any longer. Here is the short segment with Bob Deeks. The upfront costs though of going fossil free, because usually you go with an air source heat pump because that's gonna be cost wise about the same to operate versus a natural gas furnace. It is more expensive. And they're wondering like, how do we get people to spend that? But I think it's partly like, this might be a good question for you is how do we get some of the builders to start promoting the air source heat pump technology instead of doing your typical natural gas furnace and ACE in air conditioner? Yeah, I mean, the air source heat pump is one piece of equipment that does both things. Um, and so there, there may be, you know, particularly when you're going to a high performance heat pump, the, you know, the upfront cost is a little bit, a little bit higher. Um, you know, when you're building, you know, one of the advantages of a high performance house uh, is, of course, your energy cost for heating and cooling goes down a lot. Um, and so then the delta between, you know, the gas cost and the electric cost isn't, isn't so high. Uh, I suppose one of the arguments um, in terms of going to that high performance heat pump is that your energy cost in the summer, if you have a high cooling load, will be, you know, can be less than half of what it is on a typical air conditioning, you know, cheap, cheaper unit. So mm. that, that could be, you know, one selling point. Um, I, I think part of, part of that is, you know, it, is, as people become more and more engaged with this question and conversation around carbon emissions, uh, that metric that I alluded to earlier in the conversation around a step one house having 10 times less emit carbon emissions than a step five house on gas you know, questioning people, are you, are you concerned with climate change? Uh, do you understand the consequences of the carbon emissions from, you know, your, your lifestyle? And so if you are, then electrifying your house has a, has a significant impact um, on your influence on this. Yeah, that's such a great point. I got to, I've made a note of that <laughs> as well. And, and then, and then the other part of it is a gas furnace, you know, needs maintenance. Um, an air source heat pump needs very little. So, uh, you know, potentially becomes just a, an easier piece of equipment to manage uh, over the long term. I mean, you still yeah. have an air, air handler that needs the filters changed, um, but it does, does have, you know, slightly f fewer moving parts, particularly if you have that air conditioner outside anyway. Yeah. And it, I guess the tricky thing is like, obviously there's an added cost, especially to the big builders who are doing, you know, hundreds of houses a year is, is how do they put that cost in and, and get the homeowner to want to pay for it because the guy across the street is selling a similar looking house that's, you know, $10,000 cheaper because they have the natural gas furnace. And that's yeah. always the, the question that it comes, comes back to. So I, I, I that's one of the reasons why we educate, we continue to educate people because yeah. people need to know that to your point with the, your, your explanation with the rabbit is we tell people like, well, you can build a minimum code house if you want, but it is the worst home that you're allowed to build by law. Yes. And stay out of jail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there, there are some, there's some additional costs that sometimes people just don't consider and bringing gas in. So the cost of getting the gas to the front door, uh, the cost of distributing the gas throughout the house. So certainly if you go all electric, you know, there's a fairly significant cost in just not having to bring a gas fitter to the site to make all those connections. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and so, you know, as you start to look at the big picture, maybe the cost for that high performance heat pump is less than you think, particularly when you start to factor in sort of the, maybe the five to 10 year savings um, on energy for air conditioning. And as we've seen, certainly this summer here, our air conditioning loads are, are, are going up. And so our energy use in the summertime is going to increase and the cost for that is going to increase. Um, yeah. And, and the only way you can air condition is on is electric. Yeah. The, the other, the other point that I like to bring up too, is if people ever want to offset their bills with solar panels, for example, say they were going to 
build a net zero home because you can build a net zero home technically with natural gas. But I say, well, if you're ever going to put solar panels on, you can't offset your natural gas bill. Sure, you can offset and do a calculation and say that you've produced as much like or energy as you've used, but you're never going to be able to put that natural gas back in the ground. You can't produce that from your solar panels and put it back right. in. And I'm not, the, the, the landscape is changing all the time, but I think in Ontario, you, you know, you can certainly feed back through a net meter. And I think in Ontario, you're still getting the same tariff rate for feeding back into the grid as you are buying power. And yeah. so you, you potentially would see a small credit at the end of each year that might offset your natural gas cost. Yeah. So, and you know, it potentially, potentially you could, you, you could be somewhat neutral there. Yeah. But they reset it every 13 months. So if you over, uh, if you overproduce, I don't know if you get a credit or if you bank, cause I, I don't think you can go below zero. I don't think they okay. pay you more. So they, they've changed, they've the changed that. And, and in BC, uh, they've actually reduced the feed in tariff rate again. Um, they're, they're really trying aggressively to dissuade people from overproducing. Yeah. Right. Um, and so you need to size it pretty carefully because if you overproduce, you're basically just giving BC Hydro free power. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's the same here too. Glad you watched this until the very end. If you want to listen to the entire interview, we have the link down below in the description. However, if you want to check out more videos with more interesting people that we've interviewed, you can click on the playlist here and remember to live consciously.